it would be fair to say that Amaryllis was working um, as a spy for her country while still at high school, in essence, and uh, uh, <laughs> well, fo 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 foiling nuclear plots with clove oil. We'll have to get on to that. <laughs> um, welcome, welcome, welcome. The book is called Undercover. Um, it's extraordinary, if I'm absolutely honest. I've, I, I've struggled to believe a lot of it because well, that's it's beyond normal human experience. It's very generous of you to say, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Oh, I, I, fantastic. Sh I should say that when I was in high school, <laughs> I did, um, I did against my better judgment now looking back at it, but it was pretty amazing, um, sneak into Burma to interview Aung San Suu Kyi. But it, I must say it was not at that point for my country. <laughs> uh, it was with the kind of sense of immortality that I think we all have as teenagers. It would know? be fair to say that it, it was a, a tragedy that set you on your path through life for the CIA at first. Yeah, the, the first person I knew who died was my really dear friend in third grade. So I was eight years old, Laura, and she and her sister and their parents were on the flight that went down over Lockerbie, Scotland. And my mom waited until after Christmas to tell me. And... Um, and so I sort of had to understand death and terrorism at the same time, you know, as a kid. And my my dad saw I was struggling with it. He, he, he uh, I, and I share his view, which was he tried to explain everything to you. And I think the more he explained, the more fascinated and intrigued you became. Yeah, well, he had, he, he had the great insight that if you understand things, you're less afraid of them, which is very simple, but has kind of been a, a guide for me in life. And he introduced me to the newspaper, which was pretty electrifying for me, to be honest, as an eight-year-old and kind of opened up the world uh, in, in, a, in a way that, that I guess I never went back. When did, when did you make the decision? I mean, this is the peculiar thing. As, as I understand it over here, I've met a few of our spooks. and They're, um, <laughs> they're, they're around. They're around. They're yeah. actually in my fly fishing club, quite a lot of them, which is uh, yeah, <laughs> quite interesting. And all very, all, very, uh, all very secretive. <laughs> but um, generally speaking, they were tapped up by people. Uh, uh, mm. You know, they, they'd get a nudge on the shoulder and uh, a conversation was had and away they went. Yeah, you, your path seemed a little bit more almost formal. That there was a, a, a school you went to, a college you went to, to study. Was it George? George? Town? Yeah. Well, weirdly enough, I actually got the nudge on the shoulder from your guys. Um, my my mum being English, I, I did my, my undergrad here at Oxford and and had that conversation at the Fuggle and Firkin there. And at the time, <laughs> was <laughs> on a green it's velvet so sofa upstairs. It's um, truly, 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 yeah. Gosh. And said, you know, I, 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 daylight is the best disinfectant and I have no interest in the cloak and dagger life and kind of go with God, thanks for the pint, and left. Um, and then 9-11 happened. And that, that um, kind of threw me back to, to Laura's death and, and all of these changes that were happening in the world and my dad's advice of trying to understand it. So I went and did my master's at the School of Foreign Service at Georgetown back and in... Is that, is that, because this is a totally alien concept to me, is that, is that like a... Sp a spy school? For no, <laughs> no, it's not. There, there was spy school later once no, I actually no, joined. Is, the training is but, extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. No, but no, SFS is like a part of Georgetown University that focuses on geopolitics. Okay. You know, so it's 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 just a... Spy a, preschool. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time, but there was a CIA officer in residence there. So I, So how did, this, how did the CIA connection begin? Well, I was working on this algorithm as my master's thesis that was around being able to predict terrorism by looking at publicly available data. You could identify a terrorist cell in... You could work out if a village would have a terrorist cell. Would that be Or at right? least if they were more likely to. Yeah, Which, things like, you know, the percentage beneath livable wage that a border guard gets paid. So... Uh, are you a maths head? Is that what? What? what I'm the, kind of dorky. Is, is it maths yeah. numbers? Is is that a good starting point? Do you have to have a broader education? I'm just interested. Oh, in a, order to go, to, what yeah, are you yeah, going to yeah. apply? This yeah. is it, uh, to, 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 if, if somebody wants to follow in in your in your footsteps, the, what academic skills would be? Well, really, the thing that they look for most of all is the ability to connect with people and build relationships. To be curious, to to try and climb into someone else's perspective, even even if you're terrified. I know of what them. you're thinking, Kevin. 
time we're wasted here at Talk Radio. We certainly are. Yeah, yeah. We really are. It's much safer, though. <laughs> but it's Why true, do you think, though, that like they this. just troll universities? They only think clever people can connect with other people. Why don't they go to factories and offices? I think that's a very important question, and I really, really hope that more young women, more people of color, more immigrants, people with backgrounds that they don't see in the James Bond movies on the screen will think of this as a form mm. of service because each of those groups brings skills that make them better at this work than the kind of the folks that we traditionally see doing it. I think there's a drive there at the moment from MI6 to recruit yes. middle-aged mothers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Current. I don't think it's the same in the States, but I think there was... When a you hear... Um, well, let, let, let's hear a little bit of the training you underwent, Amaryllis, which is <laughs> quite what you've heard this. I think quite a lot of middle-aged housewives might think twice about becoming <laughs> Jane Bond. Uh, I mean, there, there, there were suicide trainings, uh, how to get out of handcuffs in the back of cars, I, uh, there, there's a lot of spycraft and tradecraft, but really all of that is kind of um, a, a shell casing to keep you safe while you're doing the real work, which actually I think mums are particularly well suited to doing because it's about building an emotional connection with someone who seems so distant from your worldview that you wouldn't normally have anything in common with them whatsoever. And, and uh, emotional intelligence and intuition and all those things really come into play. But yes, the training is all of the spy tricks and tradecraft. And everything as you detailed. I mean, it really is. It's just, I mean, it's, it's everything you would imagine. Uh, yeah, well, it's spy. almost nostalgic now because, you know, you see, I left 10 years ago, started 20 years ago, left 10 years ago. And since then, facial recognition and biometrics and all of this technology has become so widespread that the kind of tradecraft I was being taught by cold warriors, you know, who still used wigs and glasses and <laughs> chalk marks on, on corners, you know. <laughs> So. Can, can I ask, and this is such a lazy question, but is there any is there any TV drama or film that gives an insight into the kind of work that you may have done that bears any kind of scrutiny? I mean, I immediately thought, I mean, the first thing you must have had, Homeland, you must hear it all the time, are you the real life Carrie? But I mean, is that a useful way in? Does it does it give us any real useful insight into the kind of work people like you do? So briefly, I, I you know what film I love is Syriana. I don't know uh, if you've seen yeah, that seen by it, yeah. Stephen Gagan it, because of the nuance and the humanity. And I love Graham Greene's writing for the same reason because mm -hmm. other uh, so many of them try to kind of simplify black and white and good and evil, good guys, bad guys. And when you get out there, there's just none of that. You know, it's just pure shades of gray, and every person has the the flicker at every decision point of leaving this legacy or leaving that legacy and it's just human emotion all the way it's do i give in to feelings of humiliation and shame or grief or or awe and dreams you know and if you don't understand the human drivers behind any of it then it just becomes the eye candy that we see with kind of roof gymnastics and glock juggling uh, you know, in the in the popcorn movies, but I that's not like real uh, ordinary employees. Do they moan about uh, their wages and their <laughs> expenses, <laughs> and taxes? And they made me so go, they much. Made there's me go so go much past. paperwork. Um, <laughs> I will say, I mean, not just spies, but also the terrorists we fight, and it's one of the things that ah. I think is so interesting. Right, is that we have this tendency to lionize our heroes and demonize our villains. Yes. And the, there's this great story of the journalist who broke his computer while he was in Afghanistan and went to the market to get a new one. And the market seller was pitching his abilities and he said, I'm the Al-Qaeda computer guy. And the journalist is like, well, screw getting a new computer. I Tell me about that. That sounds in interesting. And gets a copy of this guy's hard drive and it turns out to be Zawahiri, who was the number two in wow. Al-Qaeda at the time. And they they turn it over to the government, but he mirrors it first, publishes these emails. And honestly, they're like out of an episode of The Office. It's like, dear Haji al-Yemeni, thank you for submitting your expense report, or should I say summary expense report, because no serious person would consider this a complete expense report. <laughs> No, I think you misunderstood the allowance for the fax machine as replacement <laughs> rather it. than repair. I love it. I love it. <laughs> can, can I, by, um, by contrast, I, I haven't got to it yet in the book, but I, I know about it, so I can't know it's a spoiler alert for myself, but the, 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 the coming uh, into contact with a, a terror cell uh, working on some kind of nuclear device and you counter it with a pot of clove oil currently used for dealing with um, toothache. Well, you know, one of the really difficult things about this work is that there are 
99 false alerts for every one real one. So for these, the, we would get these threats and you, you think, well, chances are, you know, either this is not real information or the the actual thing won't go off yeah, because it's yeah, 20 years old or yeah. so on. But in the off chance that it's real, you've got to go and, and have these conversations. And in this in this case, we have no idea why it didn't happen, maybe for any one of those reasons, but maybe because of the 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 moment where we stepped back from being adversarial and connected on something that you and I both know about, right, which is having a little one. And in that case, both of our kids were suffering from um, asthma because of the air quality where we were living, and we got to stop being on either side for a second, set that aside, and just be two parents who are thinking, good oh. God, can't people keep the air clean enough mm. for our kids to breathe? What a brilliant it, way of it, underlining it, your point, Narina, about, you know, yes, maybe, why not? Why not housewives in the front but line? But what I was also... It's fascinating. I've never met... Uh, See, I mean, <laughs> I'll take you to my five you. fishers club, but it's men only, unfortunately. But, tell you <laughs> did you, did, when you were doing it, did you ever... Was it 20 Twenty-four seven, or did you ever get to switch off, be question, yourself, yeah. or is it something you do that at you the carry with yourself? <laughs> yeah. Well, once you're overseas, it really is twenty-four-seven. But the funny thing is, it's different different layers every twenty. You know, sometimes when you're at home, you can be a little bit more relaxed. But if you're in a foreign country, your home is generally under surveillance as well. So it's sort of different layers of fiction and they're all there to keep you safe and to keep the people that you're talking to safe but it is quite lonely it's a lonely mm. job and a lonely way to spend your 20s which which leads me on to, to my final question although the, actually there is a subsidy just boiling on because i've just noticed that it's going to be turned into a major tv series but but uh, my, my final question is um why'd you pack it in mm. Well, I had my first daughter while I was overseas doing this work, and she really was a, a touchstone for me. I mean, here was this kind of tiny um, embodiment of everything I was fighting for, and a reminder that the mums on the other side had their little embodiments and were being disproportionately affected by this conflict. And so she she actually was was very focusing and encouraging and made me, I think, better at what I was doing. But as she got older, it seemed to me that I'd sort of gotten to a point where I'd, I'd given what I was supposed to in that particular kind of service and that there was a way to take these same tools of talking to people on the other side and use them at home in my own community. And God knows we need the ability to talk to people on the other side more than ever, right? What did you tell her you did for a living? Well, she was a tiny baby then, okay. so um, she... But she clocked me, you know. The, uh, kids see authenticity, yeah, and yeah. It, it was she was very grounding. You can, know. can you tell us quickly about the the, the TV series Apple TV? Brie Larson, Brie Larson, you? who is a force of nature, uh -huh. um, who would have been exceptional at this work in her own right. And, oh God, and that's is, that's high praise. She she really is so passionate, so aware geopolitically, so inspiring to to me and to so many. So I I can't wait to see what she does with it.